I don't know what I'm about to say. Hey, Ricardo, it's Liz. Oh, hey, Liz. How are you doing? Good. Are you able to rename yourself? Or you What's care? that? Are you able to rename yourself? Or Yes, I am. I am. I will do that in one moment. I'm having a little bit of a puppy meltdown. Oh. Shut um, okay. So the other thing is I am going to be we're having a lot of things all at once i'm going to be the tech moderator here yeah Julia, um, that email man she told me yeah my power is out but we've got the generator on so it's oh, no. working i just think it might be good to maybe if i have it uh as a backup one more version like for you to have it as the backup just yep, in case. Uh, it's it's ready to go okay i think it's going to be fine um because the internet isn't an issue uh, as long as our generator keeps working, it should be fine. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm not maybe the best tech support person of the day, but here we go. Um, okay, I'm gonna... Well, let's see what kind of turnout we got. Um, I was looking at this previous se session and it was mostly council and committee members. Okay. Well, we'll see. Hey, Kate. I'm currently sitting in my bathroom with this puppy because um, it's pouring outside and she won't go to the bathroom. How young is she? We just got her on Wednesday. She's oh eight my. weeks old. I'm so jealous, Liz. <laughs> What's her name? Her name's Louise. Oh. She's eating the garbage can. Um, it's absolutely pouring outside. So she, like, there's just not, there's just nothing to be done. Oh my God, stop it. <laughs> You're jealous, huh? <laughs> for sure. I've been waiting to get a dog for years. I think it's still another couple of years out, honestly. Yeah, we waited a long time too. I mean, for the first one anyway. We waited for a long time for this one too. Seven years we waited. Hi. Hi, Louis. Have time. Okay. So Ricardo, um, yep. I don't know if I need to do anything for the first 40 minutes. I'm no, not in on how you have this set up. Liz is doing tech support. I think Juliet's coming on. She's just gonna, she's gonna remind uh, committee members to, I'm gonna ask them to post their committee name and contact email on the chat so that anybody who's interested in joining their committee can contact them. Um, so I think she's just going to monitor the chat. 
Cool. And so Liz is going to run through the slides. I'm just going to moderate key time. Okay. Um, yeah, yes. Sounds good. That's it. I'll do the introduction and some, maybe some, some um, announcements, just kind of plug the business meeting and the awards ceremony. Um, hopefully we have a good turnout. Yeah. And so for the committee fair, can you just instruct people to ask me to advance the slide um, and I'll just keep it going? Well, um, maybe I'll have to do that since since it's going to be one person per slide or per committee. So when they're done, I guess they'll have to say the next slide or, or I'll have oh, to Yeah, when they're done, yeah, they'll just be done and then I'll do the next slide. It'll be fun. So do you still want them to say next slide after they're done or, or what? I mean, they'll probably just say they're done. It'll probably be pretty obvious that they're done. <laughs> yeah. Only, well, okay. it's going to yeah, be fine. People, most people had two slides. Um, somebody put three slides. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I think there are more uh, committees with more than one slide. So as long as they know that, well, they yeah, they'll know because they're not presenting. They'll know they need to tell someone to advance the slide. Hopefully we're not the only ones on the committees. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Is that your puppy, Liz? <gasps> Oh, <laughs> oh! We're only having no, a minor, minor meltdown if, right now. If nobody shows up, we could just admire Liz's dog for forty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! What's his what name? Breed? What's the breed? Is there a breed or? Is... She's a Labradoodle. Her name's Louise. Louise. Congratulations! And she came home on Wednesday. She's only eight weeks old, so. Oh my we don't really goodness. have much control of our faculties. I missed the start of this. What do you have, Liz? This a puppy. Oh. Cute. Are you gonna train her to like do sciencey things? <laughs> I mean, I would love for her to give Sunny a break on the island. <laughs> so that just means training her not to really care that much about birds, which I think would be okay. We, she's gonna learn on chickens. <laughs> right. Cool. Um, actually, uh, Liz, you wanna put uh, the first slide up? Yes. Hey Dave, your talk was really cool. Thanks. Uh, and I, I wanted to say, uh, have you thought about uh, controlling, like, well, I know you don't want to control, but if you end up, if people end up controlling, you need a trained raccoon or something. So they're responding to a predation event rather than. Are you all seeing the PowerPoint slide? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good, good, good point, Gail. Thanks. I've thought about that for the cormorant stuff, and they and they found that with um, on the Lake Champlain work by Adam Dewar, right, where the birds were responding not to the egg boiling, but to the herring gulls eating all the eggs. They had yeah There's a different a, response. Even call playback of predators can have that variable response too. So. Something to add into your treatment. Hey, Dave, I hope you weren't grossed out by my question regarding um, smashed eggs and stuff. But no, I was wondering if, if you left evidence, you know, that maybe that would deter the birds more and make them more likely to move somewhere else. Um, how are we doing for time, guys? We got a couple minutes. Um, okay. But we might want to wait a couple more minutes after that. It, it could, Jeff, for sure. Yeah. I just don't think it'll drive them from the actual site. It just will switch, switch territories. Yeah. Can I, if there's time, does anyone know how to get, like, they keep saying the, uh, the, the virtual trips are like, oh, you can get them on the, on the site, but I'm not finding that at all. No, I think it's all going to go on YouTube, but, um, 
Oh, no, Absolutely. it's not hard to find no. on Drifta. If you oh, go yeah. to the Drifta yeah. site and you click more, you know, there's like schedule and silent auction and all that stuff at the top. If you click more, there is a um, there's a, a link for it there and it'll take you to a page that's got them all posted. It's great. Yeah, it's okay. really cool. I could navigate there if if, uh, if folks want, but I also don't want to slow us down. No, I think it's me, Liz. I think like a, my oh, server. Right there, they're right there. Under more. Yeah. Um, Ricardo, do we need to assign any other co-hosts? Are you in, in good shape in terms of anyone else who might need to, to share their screen for the? Um, no, nobody. Nobody's sharing their screen except you, um, and they can unmute themselves. So committee chairs, just unmute themselves. Okay. Uh, um, in terms of the business meeting, also. What's that? For the business meeting, also. Oh. Uh, okay. We'll get, we'll get there when we meeting. get there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's petty, and she might be late, so she might have to do her do her report. It's mine slide. actually, and um, I'm going to share my screen to show the agenda. But and there are other people presenting, but I don't think anyone has slides. Okay. Okay, great. So Kate, you are a co-host already, so you should be able to share slides when the time comes. Okay, I think logistically we're probably in um, in good shape now. All right, so maybe let's give it one or two more minutes. Um, we'll, I don't think we'll need 30 minutes for, in other words, not every committee will use up their whole three minutes. Let's give it some time for people to join. So for committee chairs who are here already, I hope everyone's already here. Um, after you're done with your slide, please put your, your, the name of your committee and your, the contact info for the, for the committee chair for anyone in the audience who may be interested in your committee wanting to join or participate, get involved. Just put that on the chat. And Kate or Liz, if you want to mind that, if people aren't doing it. Uh, remind committee chairs to put that on there on the chat. We'll give it a couple, well, maybe one more minute or so and we'll get started. All right, um, let's see. I'm going to get started. All right, so first of all, thanks everyone for joining us. I know it's kind of late in the day, it's the last day of the conference. And, um, but, you know, please, thanks for sticking it out. Uh, but before we get onto the committee fair, I do want to encourage you to stick around for the business meeting. The business meeting is open to everyone, all members, uh, folks attending this conference. At the business meeting, you'll hear more about the updates from some, some of the committees that you're going to hear about right now. Uh, and other important stuff that's going on with the Waterbirds, some of the inner workings of the Waterbird Society. You can learn more about our budget um, our, from our treasurer and about future in-person meetings, hopefully crossing your fingers for next year and the year after that. So stick around for that. And after the business meeting, uh, also stay, stick around for the awards ceremony where we're gonna learn more about the winners of our research awards. Um, as well as the Distinguished Service Award. So very excited to see who got that. I actually don't know, or maybe I did, but I, I don't remember. Um, so closing out the conference, there'll be a lecture by Ryan Carl regarding long-term monitoring and proactive habitat management, the story of a successful new nesting colony at, of Cassin's Oplets at Año Nuevo Island, California. All right, so this committee fair. So the committee fair is to showcase the different committees in the Waterbird Society. Uh, there's over a dozen committees in this society, but today we're just going to spotlight 10 of them. Our goal is for you to learn more about the activities of each committee, who chairs them, who co-chairs them, and more importantly, how you can get involved. All the committees are always looking for members to assist, definitely need new blood. So if you're looking to get more involved with the Waterbird Society, please consider joining one of these committees. These committees are a great way to network with other Waterbird professionals and students and learn more about the inner workings of the society. 
And speaking of students, being an active member on these committees looks great on a resume or CV. Uh, so if there's a particular committee that you're interested in, please contact the committee chairs listed on the chat. I will post my email at the end, actually, yeah, I'll post my email at the end of this session if you want to contact me so I can put you in touch with that committee if you, if you miss who's chairing that committee. Uh, committee chairs, again, um, after your slide, please post your committee, the name of your committee and the contact information in case anyone wants to get uh, in contact with you. So with that, let's get started with committees. Um, first committee, take it away. Thanks, Ricardo. Thanks for putting on this committee fair. Um, my name is Marisa. I'm a co-chair of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee along with Liz and Juliet uh, pictured here. So these are our emails. Um, and the Diversity Committee was founded in 2016 and with the mission provided here. And ultimately the role of the committee is to promote, uh, promote and celebrate diversity in our society. And we fulfill this role in various ways. You can go to the next slide, um, Liz or Ricardo. And so one of those ways is by integrating DEI and, um, to the core operations of the society. And so just some of the current work that we've been doing is that uh, last year we developed an intercommittee action plan. And this was to improve inclusiveness and accessibility in the society, as well as increase engagement and retention of underrepresented groups. So we had a lot of different action items. One of those was to propose a funding request to hire a DEI consultant. And um, we are planning to have a revised funding request under review early next year. Our committee also organizes various events during the annual meetings to raise awareness of DEI related issues, such as an LGBTQ plus panel in 2016. And um, at that meeting, the diversity committee designed this emblem pictured here, which is the journal logo of the Waterbird Society that was modified with colors of different gender identities. And this, um, these stickers with this emblem were provided at the meeting to show support for the LGBT plus community. And they're also available on the drive to meeting platform website under merchandise. So if you wanted to um, donate some of those stickers, they are available. At last year's annual meeting, the diversity committee hosted a discussion on experiences of black indigenous people of color in waterbird science. And then this year with the student affairs committee, we co-organized a panel on waterbird related careers in North Latin America and helped put on this committee fair. So um, I gained a lot of um, a lot of amazing experience just being in this committee. I started out first as a, just a general member of the Waterbird Society, then a member of this committee, and now co-chair, and um, um, made a lot of great uh, connections through through being and working on this committee. So we plan to continue expanding both the representation and the breadth of our work while valuing all axes of diversity. So the more individuals that are involved, the more meaningful progress we can make. So please consider joining um, the Diversity Inclusion Committee, and if you have any questions or ideas, uh, you can reach out to me, Liz, or Julia. Thank you. Thanks, Marissa. Uh, next committee we have is the Student Activities Committee. Hi. Uh, this committee, sorry, my cats decided to join me, um, is uh, co-chaired by Juliet Lamb and myself. I'm Gail Fraser. And it, this committee has typically been, um, the next slide, um, focused on three aspects um, that, that are mostly right, that happen um, before or, or at the meeting. So it, it can um, be, there can be a lull and then there's quite a much busyness. Thank you, Juliet. Um, she just put up our email addresses. And um, so we do uh, the student travel awards uh, so, um, where we review the applications, but also make sure we get the wording on, on the website. We um, distribute the funds at the, allocate the funds and then distribute the funds at the meeting. We uh, organize student judges for uh, uh, evaluating the student presentations. So it's contacting and scheduling the judges um, and then getting their feedback and meeting um, during the meeting uh, and coming up with our decisions. And then um, the third activity has been other ac student uh, oriented activities, um, including the student 
mentor lunch and then um, other social events. So it, it's, it has varied because we're um, doing it virtually, but um, I know Juliet and Marisa has uh, did a, a mentor lunch together. I don't know if you, since you're here, Juliet, if you wanna weigh in on anything or say hi. No, okay. Um, uh, any rate, so yeah. And, kind of, sorry, it just kind of, I'm, I'm just speaking for Juliet for a moment. I think she's joined us without audio. So I'm oh, sure okay. she would love to say hi, but I don't think she has the capacity right now. Okay, that's all good. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought she was gonna be asleep by now. So <laughs> um, any rate, it, I'm sure there's other things that could be done. Um, so if you uh, want to join us, there's, there's some things that it, it makes more sense for students to be involved in than others, but um, certainly contact us. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Gail. So next is membership committee. Great, thanks Ricardo for putting this on and sorry, my video just isn't working today. Um, so this is really exciting. Uh, I am co-chair of this and uh, Jim Fraser has bowed out right now because he just has a ton of stuff uh, going on. And Dan, uh, uh, not Dan Anderson, uh, John Anderson has agreed to, to help me. I'm really excited. And a bunch of other people have also agreed, mainly um, either people at the beginning of, of their careers, um, early career researchers and some students. So this has really put new blood into this committee. And uh, the, the great thing is that I had a long talk with the the person in charge of membership at the British Ornithological Union. And so we're going to completely revamp how the uh, how this committee works. So I've just put up a couple things here that are just kind of basic um, bookkeeping. Uh, just you answer people, they, they might say, I thought I was a member, what's the deal? And you just have to email them back. And there is this management company that keeps a big list of all the people who have paid for membership. And so that's a really good way to check. And if there's some kind of glitch and the people actually are members at the management company doesn't have uh, their name and all the details, it's just very easy for us to fix that. So that really takes very little time. And the nice thing is also to just email thank you notes to all new members, because I think that's always a nice gesture to feel like you get a personal email from the Waterbury Society. The short report is just really simple. All you do is just tally up the number of members you know, this year versus last year, and just, uh, and maybe trends, and then, you know, what, what your plans are. Um, but the big thing is this establish a strong internet social media presence. I can't remember what's on the next slide, Ricardo, so could you go ahead and, and see it? Okay, right. So um, after the annual meeting, I think uh, Chris Custer does a lot of this, uh, collects a lot of the new membership names, because all of the membership stuff goes to her too. And uh, these new issues like the free membership, that's something that um, is right on the front burner for us. And uh, the social media campaign, though, is the big thing. And this is where we're going to dovetail with the uh, three committees, the student activities, the diversity, and the outreach committee, um, because they're all, we all overlap, and those committees are all part of this. So one thing that we're going to be doing is um, highlighting um, members on all social media sites. And we're going to uh, also um, ask the diversity committee to shunt us any really neat stories or any uh, new people, you know, people's projects, also with student activities and, and the outreach, the people who are in outreach right now, everyone who's been posting, I know that Anna and Amanda and um, Danielle and um, a bunch of other people have really done a great job with um, posting on the web and on the social media. And so we're going to be doing that very regularly. And we're also going to, I hope, uh, reach out to early career people. And we're going to have to start identifying that. Um, and we'll uh, deal with that category later. But I think that group is really important. And so I'll be talking with all the other committees about that. Um, but we want to offer uh, workshops and maybe some mini courses and things like that free to all ECRs and to students. So it's gonna really expand a lot of the membership uh, for uh, the 
people maybe less than 40 or something like that. So I think it's going to be really fun. John and I are very excited. And um, I think that next time we report, we'll have a lot more to, to tell you. But I just want to make sure that the chairs of the uh, those three committees, the Student Activities, Diversity, and Outreach, that we keep in close touch because I think we're all working together for the same goal. So uh, anyone who uh, wants to uh, join or, or learn more, I'm going to put my email and uh, John's in the uh, chat. All right, thanks, Pat. We, got, we need to go out to the next one. Um, next one would be nominations committee. Okay, I'm doing that, Ricardo. Uh, thank you very much for organizing this. Uh, Clay Green and I are the co-chairs of this committee and typically the vice president, I mean the past presidents of the last two sessions are the co-chairs of this committee. So I'll be stepping off at the end of December. Um, but the function is really to seek and recruit individuals to run for society elections, and that includes counselors, and those are three-year terms, counselor student seats, which are two-year terms, and which we've just agreed to have two seats, uh, secretary, treasurer, and these some, sometimes are positions that have been held for a long time. For example, Chris Custard has been our treasurer uh, for many, many years and does a great job. And then also the most important vice president and president um, and that person is president elect. And so we do this every other year. And so our goal is really to recruit diverse individuals from across our membership to serve on, on council. And anyone can be on this committee. Um, in, in some ways it makes sense for past members of council to be on or members of um, current members of council because at least they know a little bit more about what's going on. But if you've been involved with any professional or organization before, you probably have an idea of what the governance is like for scientific societies. So if you're interested, um, we love having new members and certainly the student member this year provided a lot of uh, excellent suggestions for new counselors that provided a lot of diversity in our council. So thank you very much. I think you have one more slide. <laughs> oh, I have another one. Okay, yeah. so um, yes, so we usually meet, um, we recruit individuals throughout the year, but mostly just before we need to, but so anybody can email us now. Um, we usually meet via email in March or April to review the potential list of candidates for council and then invite those to run for specific positions and solicit their biographies. And then we organize the ballot and one person usually does that. So that's not a lot of work. So it's really just the one meeting and keeping a, an eye out for potential members of council. Um, and that's kind of ongoing all the time. Thanks, Thanks. Erica. All right, the next one we have is grants committee. Hi, uh, I'm Nellie Tibura. I am uh, the co-chair of the Grants Committee. Uh, Jan and Kate are also co-chairs. Uh, and we have uh, three uh, research grants that we administer. Uh, one of them is the Kushlin Grant, which is for storks and herons and egrets. It's for ciconiforms. Um, uh, and then we have the Nesbitt Grant, which is terns and gulls. Uh, and then we have the Waterbird Society Grant, uh, which is for all the species. So uh, we cover the ones that the Kushlin grant covers, but also uh, we, uh, you know, we also can include shorebirds and ducks and other species in that. Uh, the grants are due February 1st uh, every year, February 1st, 2022. Usually uh, it has a pretty quick turnaround. Usually we get to review them, you know, by early March. And usually we have the results out by March 15th. Average grant is about uh, $3,000, but we get requests anywhere from a thousand to $7,000. Uh, it's, uh, it's a really good amount of money for students um, and your early career scientists because it could be used to uh, uh, help fundraise more and get additional grants and it looks good on a resume. Um, and um, we get some pretty fun grants. It's fun doing it because we get to see what uh, what people are doing with uh, different species. That's it. Thanks, Nelly. Uh, next up, Conservation Committee. Hey, can you hear me? Hear me? Yep. yep. Oh, good. Um, 
Uh, I'm Jonathan Cohen. I'm co-chair of the Conservation Committee, and um, so I'm pasting the contact information for myself and my co-chair, uh, Sean Murphy, into the chat. Um, so we have two um, main areas that we focus on. Um, one is to uh, address the Waterbird Society's mission to support the conservation of waterbirds. So uh, we do various advocacy activities um, and so more or less active in that depending on the year. Uh, so people bring us issues or policy items. Um, I, I work closely with the Ornithological Council on this. So they suggest things to, uh, to focus on or if we get an issue, I write to them to ask you know, what they think the best approach would be, whether it's um, asking our members to do, to write to their congressperson or to actually write a public comment uh, from the society. So we've done that for things like U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Double Crested Cormorant Management, um, Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Uh, and then we've also written letters to, um, to state officials, uh, wrote to um, uh, province provincial officials in, um, in Canada regarding Double Crested Cormorant hunt um, last uh, two years ago. Uh, and sometimes we send letters of support and offers of expertise to, um, to wildlife managers who might be dealing with uh, conservation uh, issues. And so to that end, you know, we don't, we can't always respond easily to some things we want to write about because uh, the committee itself doesn't have uh, maybe the expertise and also um, we have members who are um, government employees who aren't allowed to uh, take advocacy positions and write letters. So uh, if people are interested in um, either joining or maybe giving your name as someone who wants to be kept on a, on a list as an expert on a certain topic that we can turn to, because we often turn to outside help for these kinds of things. Um, next slide. And then the other thing we oversee uh, is the, um, the Waterbirds uh, Publication Award. Um, so uh, the Outstanding Contribution to Conservation Paper Award we've given every year since 2017. Um, and so that goes to the paper in Waterbirds that uh, meets criteria for addressing waterbird conservation. Um, and so uh, we have people who go through and the, the volume for the year that we're focused on and pick out um, I abstracts that look like they meet the criteria. And then we have a smaller group of us that reads, um, divides up the papers and reads them and sort of ranks them. And then our whole committee looks at the, the final suggestion, which is usually three to five papers and then picks the top one, um, which we recommend to the council for the award. And um, then starting last year, we invite the, um, the winner of the award to speak during the awards ceremony. So you will see um, our winner tonight uh, talking about um, the winning paper. Uh, we developed the Best Student Paper in Conservation Award, which is given to student talk at the annual meeting. Um, that's now really under the purview of the Student Activities Committee. So if you wanna participate in that, um, you can join that committee or else make yourself available as a judge. Um, but that's uh, started being given a couple of years ago. And that's it. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, next, we have publication painting. Hi, Ricardo. Uh, thanks for putting this together, of course. Uh, I'll be speaking on behalf of the Publications Committee. Um, our members are Erica Knoll, myself, uh, Kaz Taylor, and then the managing editor, Paige Barley, and the editor-in-chief, Andrew Kastner. So some of the activities we do in this committee is um, we just correspond with Bio1 and JSTOR. These are kind of the, um, I guess, journals where most of our um, articles are located. Um, so if there's anything of interest they send to us, we just update the council on that. Um, we determine papers for open access through Bio1, which means, um, which papers are free to read if you don't have like access to that site. Uh, we track and report on journal trends and statistics such as impact factor. And we put this together in the publications report uh, just before meetings like this every year. Um, and then we provide support for the managing editor and editor in chief. And for the upcoming editorial management system. Um, I don't, I can't really say how much of a time commitment is being on the publications committee because a lot is going to change in the future with the editorial management system, but it's probably similar to what the other committees expect from their members. Um, next slide. So I just put together some achievements of what we did this year. So 
So we're switching from an email-based submission system to this editorial management system online. Um, I'm actually new to the committee. I just joined in February this year and Kaz Taylor joined this summer. Um, Paige Byerly was hired as the managing editor just last month. And um, we're, we're gonna be hiring the next editor in chief shortly in the next few months. Um, and then we published uh, Waterbirds volumes uh, 41, 43, 1, 43, 2, 43.3-4, and then 44.1 and 44.2 are coming soon. Right, that's all from us. I put on our uh, emails in the chat. So if you're interested in joining, send an email to me or Erica. Thanks, Jeff. No problem. Uh, next is me. Um, I'm the Ricardo Zambrano Chair of the Finance and Investment Committee. Um, so the Finance and Investment Committee that basically coordinates with the Waterbird Society Treasurer and Parsec, who's our financial advisor. Parsec in turn um, invests, well, tells Fidelity uh, Federal where to invest the money. And um, what the society has been trying to do lately is to try to invest this money in socially responsible investments, SRIs, uh, you know, mainly investments, mutual funds that aren't oil or, you know, fossil fuels, et cetera. Um, so that's the kind of thing the Finance and Investment Committee um, handles. Um, they also, met, well, we don't manage, but we make sure that the money from the endowments that go towards the awards, uh, again, that's responsibly invested with the Delhi Investments. Uh, we track the portfolios, make sure Parsec, our financial uh, managers, are doing the job that they're supposed to be doing, and they have been doing a great job. Our, our investment portfolio has been skyrocketing the Waterbird Society portfolio, portfolio as a whole, uh, both from the uh, NISBIT endowment, the Cushman endowment, and the general Waterbirds endowment is approaching nearly $2 million, so in very good financial shape. Uh, the Finance Investment Committee right now also reports uh, an annually to the council meeting on the performance of investments. And uh, at the beginning of the year, we also provide uh, reports to the to Jim Cushlin and Ian Nesbitt on their endowments, how the money is uh, doing that they've, they've uh, donated to the society. Um, and just a plug for the Finance and Investment Committee, it does need a co-chair. Right now, I'm kind of just a lone person. Uh, it does not require a lot of, a lot of um, Time commitment, it does kind of require a little bit of, of knowledge about how to investments, how, how they work. Um, so, if, so if you're one of those persons who, who's great investments, please uh, contact me. I'll put my contact information in a bit. Thanks. So next we have Outreach and Communications Committee. Hi, um, my name is Anna Valerie. I um, am co-chairing the Outreach and Communications Committee with Amanda, who I think is also on here. Um, but we just have a couple updates and um, kind of give an overview of what we do. Um, so Amanda really is the one behind doing all of the website updates um, kind of on an as needed basis. So if anybody's ever popping around the website and see something out of date, um, please let us know. Um, we also kind of, this is our busy season with what updating the website and making sure everybody, all the members and everything get the correct information about the meeting and grants and all of that fun stuff. Um, but the other aspect of this is social media. Um, so we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram um, and uh, regularly post kind of about updates throughout the organization, but also interesting things related to water birds, grant opportunities, job opportunities, and things like that. Um, we also have the Slack workspace, so I think a bunch of people have logged in and are using that for this meeting, but that stays up all year round. Um, so if you're interested in getting in touch with other folks in, within the Waterbird Society, you can always go back to that Slack workspace. Um, can we go to the next slide? And so we are looking for more help with the communications committee, especially um, Pat kind of alluded to this. We're going to try and do some more um, campaigns or student profiles, research updates, and other things. So if you are really interested in science communication um, or helping with recruiting more members to the Waterbird Society or anything like that, please um, feel free to get in touch with myself or Amanda. Um, we'll definitely put your skills to use. So that's all I've got. Sorry, I was mute. Uh, next is the Awards and Recognitions Committee. This is Patty here. 
All right, so she's not here. Uh, next slide. So the Wards and Recognitions Committee, oh, go back, sorry. Uh, the Wards and Recognitions Committee, so they, they uh, mainly handle these three um, recognition here in wards. I won't read it here, but of course, the Kate Curry Lindo Award, Robert Cushman Murphy Prize and Distinguished Service Award. Um, if you were here at the beginning of the session, uh, these awards are gonna be presented later on this evening. So again, just wanna make sure, stick around for that. After the business meeting, there's gonna be the awards and recognition a section and then a, a lecture, um, I forget his name, but stick around for that uh, the business, after the business meeting. Uh, next slide. So uh, the Words and Recognitions Committee does have some needs. It definitely needs more non-North American committee members. So if you're from outside Canada and the US, um, we're not gonna include Mexico in this case. So if you're from Mexico, we definitely, we want you to you know to join us to, to work to join the awards and, and uh, recognition committee. Uh, we're trying to increase the number of nominations originating originating from membership, and uh, so Patty is a, one of the co-chairs, as is uh, John Anderson. I'll put uh, Patty's uh, email on there after this slide, um, and that's it for this one. Thanks. Next. So we have time if anybody has questions on any of the specific committees. Uh, the committee chairs are here. Um, you can put them on the chat or just raise your hand if you have any questions on, on any of the ones we talked about. I'm gonna put my email address if there's, you didn't catch some of the emails um, and you can contact me if you want more information on any of these committees. Um, I can put you in touch with those folks. All right, so we Arnold, have- there's a question in the chat. Oh, you see it, I think. Yes, yeah. Um, will there be a summative list of committees on the website? Uh, I think we can do that. Um, it, there is a list um, of our committees currently on the Waterbirds website. Is okay. that, yeah, is that the, I think that's the question. And we can put a, a link in the chat um, to that. All right, other questions. Oh, so Juliet put the uh, Patty's email if you're interested in that last one. Again, looking for non-North American members to join that one for words and recognitions. Any other questions? Thanks Amanda for posting that. So um, she put a list to the or direct link to any, to our uh, committees. Uh, again, just a reminder, what we mentioned today, that's only 10 committees. There's over 10 committees in the uh, Waterbirds. Um, some, probably don't need members. We have one that was mentioned, for example, was the Future Meetings Committee. That committee um, looks into when the next annual meetings is gonna take place. So right now they're working on the Texas one and after that, the Florida one. All right. So if we don't see any more uh, questions, um, I think we're scheduled for a 10 minute break. And after that's gonna be the business meeting. Again, I do encourage you to stick around for the business meeting. You're gonna hear some more detailed reports from some of these committees. Um, again, such as our budget, how it's doing. And um, you'll get to meet some of the folks in this committee chairs a little bit more in depth. Um, so stick around for that. Don't go anywhere. Thanks everyone. Thanks Ricardo. Thanks all the committee chairs. Thanks, Ricardo. You're welcome. So the council meeting is all, still on this channel, right? So if we just stay on, we're, we'll be good for the council meeting, business meeting, I'm sorry, yeah. Correct, yes, yes. Uh, it's just a business, I mean, I'm sorry, a 10 minute break. So it should be on at 4.50, if I'm not mistaken. That would be you, Dave, I think. <laughs> What was that? I think that would be you and Patty, right? For the business meeting? 
Uh, It'll be me and Dave. Yeah, Kate. Oh, okay. Kate, right, Kate. Kate mostly. Kate or Dave, is there any um, anything we want to put up a slide or anything um, while folks filter in? Good idea. I was just thinking that I'll throw the agenda up. Does that make sense? Or I could yeah, put that minutes would be great. Out. And then I'll I'll stay on as tech support, but I'm I'm passing I'm passing the baton to you. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Liz, what do you see? Do you just see my um, Adobe with the agenda? Yeah, I can okay. see the, um, yes, I can see two tabs, the 2021 and the 2020 business meeting, but I'm reading the, um, the 2021 agenda. Perfect, thank you. Looks great.
Dave, I see it's 4.50. Are you ready to kick us off? I'm ready. I think you're up first, just if you want to call the meeting to order. Sorry. Uh, yes, I'd like to call the meeting to order and I'd like to welcome everyone who's attending and just reiterate that this is a really important part of our annual meetings. It's when, uh, you know, uh, council and all the committees get to share the activities uh, that we've been up to for the past year. Um, kind of tell you where we're, we, uh, we're trying to go over the next year and it's really a chance for people to uh, you know, voice their opinions or uh, raise issues. Uh, so thank you for attending. Um, I'd like to begin uh, just by acknowledging indigenous people, peoples everywhere who are an inseparable part of the land we inhabit and taking a point from Alberto's talk this afternoon just to acknowledge that they are also leaders and necessary partners in meaningful stewardship and conservation. Um, just quickly, I'd, I'd also like to welcome uh, Patty Stish, who uh, very shortly will be uh, the Waterbrook Society president. Um, I'm really, really happy and uh, optimistic for the future of our society. Like Patty is a natural leader and she's uh, introduced a lot of initiatives over the past few years. So uh, I hope you'll join me in supporting her in the, the things she tries to accomplish over the next couple of years. Um, anyway, uh, first order of business is uh, to approve today's agenda, which is up on the screen. And before we do that, uh, I just wondered if there was anyone uh, had uh, additional business to propose. Okay, um, so could someone move to approve today's agenda and second it? So I'll move to approve or second if someone just moved before me. Okay, so I guess we have to do this by show of hands, eh? Yeah, folks uh, can too. Okay, do you, uh, please raise your hand if you approve today's agenda. And It looks to me. Uh, again, there's a lot of people who haven't uh, voted. So please just raise your hand if you approve uh, the agenda for the business meeting. You can use the reaction button. We may I can't. also run into people who are, you know, getting dinner ready or stepped out away from the, I, I think as long as we have half or more, we should be in good shape. And there's, a, there's a question in the chat about who, who can vote during this meeting. Everybody. Yes. It's uh, this, this meeting is for all, all Water Society members. Dave, the other thing you could do is just ask people to say I or something if they supported. That would be easier. Okay, everybody unmute and say say A or nay. A is I I whatever. Okay. <laughs> any nays? None. Any abstentions? None. Agenda passed. Okay, the second order of business is to uh, approve our 2020 business uh, meeting minutes. Okay. So again, if someone could move and second that. Those were posted on Slack earlier today and I'm not, um, I don't know if this is an effective way to share it with the size of the font, but.
That looks good, Kate, what you've done. I can second. Somebody's already moved. I think you're moving, Gail. You're moving, yeah. So I need a second, please. I can second that, this is Jen. Thanks, Jen. Okay, could everyone please uh, yell yay if you if you uh, approve the 2020 minutes. Yay. 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 Any nays? Motion passed. All right, now I'm going to turn it over to, uh, I think Patty is up first to uh, give a report on this year's uh, conference. So thanks, Patty. All right, this is less than ideal, but hopefully um, you can follow along with what I want to present here. Mainly, I wanted to share this part of the program that will be entered into the, um, the Waterbirds website as a PDF. It'll include all of our abstracts um, from this year, so it'll mirror our in-person meetings. Um, and so here, what I've done is I've outlined all of the people that worked hard to make sure that this meeting was going to be possible on a virtual platform. And I hope everyone agrees, but we should probably send a survey. I feel like the platform gave us a, a good uh, place to meet and a central hub for information that we didn't have last year. So I hope that members will agree that it was an improvement. But I'd like to acknowledge Jonathan Cohen, Chris Custer, Clay Green, Nellie Sapora, um, Jenna Schlenner, Kate Schlepper, Anna Valerie, Liz Craig, and Erica Knoll um, uh, as members of the committee that made this possible. Liz, um, Susan, Pat, and Chip uh, are responsible for the ambitious virtual silent auction. I don't know who you are out there, but there's people bidding me up on the items that I want. So I think that that was a really nice um, addition to our virtual meeting. I can't wait to bid against you in person again. But for now, this is this is good. And so thank you for that, um, that endeavor. Of course, all of those proceeds assist our students in traveling to South Texas in 2022. A huge, huge thank you to Juliet Lamb. I don't know if everyone is aware of how much work she put into this. She single-handedly had the idea for the virtual field trips. She put together instructions and guidance and she solicited those virtual field trips from all of the, the contributors. And I think that was an amazing and really exciting part of this meeting. She also was responsible, um, led the student mentor meetup and, um, uh, in addition to Juliet, uh, Marisa and Sarah, Liz and Ricardo, um, Aliyah, and helped to organize the early career panel, which looked amazing. I wasn't able to participate, but just the, the flyer and advertisement uh, made it clear that that was going to be a really valuable panel for our students and early career researchers. Um, and honestly, Danielle learned how Drifta works. She is probably a professional programmer now after trying to learn behind the scenes. And this would not have happened at all without Danielle. So I wanted to be sure to thank her. She and Juliet um, made sure that we had all kinds of training and did, um, did things behind the scenes that were very important. And then um, just some information there about the scientific program. We had 59 oral presentations, 12 lightning talks, which was another exciting addition um, to our virtual meeting this year that we haven't had before. A panel discussion, the two symposia with their two plenary uh, speakers that were amazing, 19 student presentations, five virtual field trips, the early career scientist event and the mentor meetup. So thank you to everyone who made this possible. And um, for those of you members and participants, if you run into one of them, please, please give them your thanks. If you have questions, I'm happy to um, address those. And major thanks to Patty because you did a ton of work too. <laughs> Not nearly as much this year. 
Does anyone All have right. question, questions for the chair of the scientific program? And I, I just like to echo that. Like I thought the the program and how smoothly things went this year is really a testament to the incredible amount of personal time that people um, you know, donated to making this a, a really special event. And I just like if everyone could join me with a virtual applause for the entire uh, meeting organizing committee. Yay, thank you. Thanks guys. Sorry, I'm so, okay. Uh, next is uh, Chip with the future meetings report. Um, I can start or is Chip over there? Oh, there okay. Yeah. okay. Just trying to get organized. Um, okay, um, can you people hear me? Hello? Yep, you're good. Oh, okay. Okay, future meetings committee. Where are we going in the coming years? <clears throat> well, as we've heard, uh, we're going to Texas ne next year. And hopefully that will be a hybrid meeting where we're gonna have some in-person component and we're gonna have some uh, virtual component. And I guess it depends on what COVID is doing that dictates how much of that we do. But anyway, that's on the docket for 2022. In 2023, we're going to South Florida. Ricardo will be the local chairperson there and he will work out details of that meeting pretty much depending on what happens in Texas and again, how COVID, how active COVID is. For 2024, uh, we're working closely with Pacific Seabird Group and hoping to have a joint meeting with them in Costa Rica. Uh, it'll either be our usual meeting time in the fall in November or October, November in 2024, or possibly in early 2025. And then planning for the uh, late meeting in 2025, our October, November meeting, we're planning on having that in the Great Lakes area, either Detroit, Windsor, or, or Toledo. And Rachel Pierce from U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh, has volunteered to be the uh, chairperson for that, that meeting. So uh, it looks like we're set for the next, next four years. And what COVID does will sort of affect uh, exactly the form of the meeting. That's all. Oh, I might also add that in preparation for the 2022 meeting, uh, Waterbird Society will probably be polling all of our members to see exactly how they feel about traveling under different conditions. Uh, I think we're gonna have a poll soon, perhaps in the next two weeks, and then we would have a second poll probably in August when we're a lot closer uh, to the meeting time. So be prepared for that and please respond. Thanks, Chip. Uh, does anyone have, any oh, questions? are you finished? Yeah, any yes, questions I'm for Chip? Any questions? Dale, Dale Golick is our chairperson for next year's meeting. So um, I just wanted to add that. Again, thanks, Chip. Uh, oh, sorry, Erica, did you have a question? No. No. Um, Thank you, uh, and thanks to the organizing committee for the, the Texas uh, meeting that's coming up. Things with COVID, like there's been a bunch of uh, uh, jumps and starts. And uh, yeah, so if you have any input for the, the meeting next year, which I hope will be in person, uh, just talk to Chip or Clay or uh, Dale Golick who are and some of the other, or Woody, sorry, Woody Woodrow as well, uh, who are on the uh, local committee for Texas. Okay, up next is uh, Kate to give the secretary's report. And uh, before, while she's getting set up, I just wanted to thank her for, she does an amazing amount of work 
uh, juggling her PhD and keeping us organized and recording uh, decisions uh, that may, and actions for for the future. Thanks, Kate. Thanks. Um, and my role here is to report on the council meeting that we had this last Monday. So it's one of two annual uh, council meetings we have a year. And the people who show up to that meeting include 17 voting members of the Waterbird Society. So these are the officers and uh, your elected councilors, plus committee co-chairs and committee members, and then some special guests. For example, we invited those folks that got elected into next, next year to join our meeting. Um, so this year, a few of the highlights, we spent a couple hours talking about our strategic plan, which was last completed in 2011, and we're looking to revamp it and revise it now. Um, it's a really special time to sort of reaffirm our society's values and our mission and think about our priorities and what our, what are our current challenges and how to, and how to deal with them, how to face them. Um, I wanted to mention that now, while we have a broader audience to say that we are really looking to invite broad participation from membership. So we're asking you to keep your eyes on your email um, because we're gonna uh, be hosting some Zoom discussion sessions and surveys, just different ways to solicit uh, feedback from general membership. We also, a large part, large part of the day, day consisted of committee reports and I'm gonna skip that for now because we'll have some co-chairs that will present their updates here momentarily. And the last piece of business was that we had uh, two motions that passed that were meant to bolster diversity and inclusivity of our membership. So one of those motions was um, for one year free membership to all students and early career scientists who register for our annual meetings. And that'll be ongoing. So every time you register for a meeting, your membership for the following year will be free. And then similarly, we're offering one year of free membership to all scientists outside the United States and Canada who register for the meeting, who submit a grant proposal or who submit a paper to our journal Waterbirds. And again, this is ongoing. So you register, for a meeting and you're not a scientist in the United States or Canada, we're giving you a year of free membership. And our very final um, piece of the day was a motion that passed to honor one of our very own with a distinguished service award. And if you stick around for the closing ceremony in the next hour, you'll find out who that is. That is all I have. Thanks guys. Thanks Kate. Uh, does anyone have any questions about uh, the current uh, council meeting. Okay. So next up is uh, uh, Chris. Are you ready to go uh, with with the treasurer and financial report? Yes, I am. I'll share my screen. And again, just while uh, Chris is setting up, I. I don't know how long Chris has been our treasurer, but she does an amazing job uh, keeping us uh, financially uh, in the black. And I just, again, just like to thank her for all her service. Th thanks, Dave. So as uh, Ricardo in the committee fair indicated, you know, we've got actually two parts to our financial situation, the operating piece, which I'll uh, talk about first, and then the our investments, which I'll close with. So what we see here is our operating budget. And I'll have to say, things have looked fairly bleak. I haven't had to make this kind of report since about 2004. So that's kind of discouraging in a way, but Partly, you know, it's due to COVID and the cascading issues uh, surrounding COVID. So hopefully this is just a, a couple year uh, issue with our operating budget. But what you can see is the green line is our revenue starting in about 2001 and our expenses in the red line, at, um, again, starting in 2001. And you can see um, in 2020, we had a 
decline in both our revenue and expenses, they rather paralleled each other. So that worked out fine. 2021, it appears that our revenue and expenses are going to parallel each other, but that's not going to be the case. Our revenue is front end loaded with dues, uh, bio one and JSTOR revenue, et cetera. And our expenses continue uh, through the end of the year. So at the end of the year, we should break about even, but barely. So um, we hopefully, as I said, this is just a somewhat of a temporary um, downturn. So just to break that down, we have three main revenue sources and they're all down. Our Bio One and JSTOR uh, is down in 2021. Very concerning is our membership numbers. Uh, this is reports the revenue, uh, which is down, but it also indicates the number of members we have. And I just want to encourage everyone to become members, stay members, and encourage your colleagues and students to become members because it's critical and important. And then our third piece of our revenue, our page charges. So I know that not everybody can pay page charges, but as you're writing your proposals and your grants, please try and factor in some money to pay for page charges because it does. it's a costly operation to uh, publish and maintain a journal. But I also want to encourage everyone, uh, partly for the Bio One and JSTOR revenue stream, is send your publications to Waterbirds. Send your manuscripts there and encourage others to, because the, the more manuscripts we have and the better quality manuscripts we have, the better our journal is, which will then uh, reflect in the citation factors and enhance our society. So that kind of wraps up the, the operating piece. You know, we'll get through this, but um, it's gonna take work on everybody's part to support the society and support the journal. But as Ricardo said, because the stock market's been booming since about 2008, all of our investments look excellent. The bars, the blue bars are what we've added, either the society or uh, Jim Cushlin or Ian Nisbet. And then the current value are is the red line and red X. So you know we're we uh, have had good returns for the past uh, 10, year, 10 years or so. You know those are paper returns. You know so if there's a major correction on the stock market, those won't look quite so rosy. But but they are looking very good now. So uh, that's good because. Uh, as some of you in the audience have received Nesbitt and Cushland grants, and I want to thank both of them for being so supportive of the society over the years. And then our general endowment, as Nellie talked about, supports our research grant, but it also supports many of the special projects that we've done over the years, uh, as well as student travel awards. So that's all I'm going to say about the all our financial documents are available on our webpage. If you have questions for me, um, you can ask them now or you can uh, email me at ccustorusgs.gov if you have questions and I'll be uh, happy to answer them uh, if asked. Dave, that's it for me. Uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, does anyone have any questions about uh, the society budget or finances? Oh, and before I turn this over, um, this is um, the 20, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, excuse me, um, the 2022 budget. And again, uh, we're gonna be very close to the break even point. So again, I wanna encourage everybody to become members, to pay their page charges, to click a lot on JSTOR and Bio One because those all contribute to our revenue stream. Now, Dave, I'm finished. Thanks, Chris. Any, any questions for Chris? Not seeing any. So up next, we have uh, the report from the nominating committee. So. If Erica or Clay could give that report, please. I'm doing that, Dave. Um, yeah, just uh, make it quick. I know uh, Ricardo and, and Erica talked earlier about the nominations committee. So just uh, 
open it up for anybody that would like to serve on the committee um, and uh, just reach out to Erica or, I or any of the members. And just real quick, right, so for the elections for 22, I think, I know they've been announced earlier, but just want to echo them again. Um, we, um, for vice president, Ricardo Zambrano was elected as our vice president, president elect. For counselor, Marissa Martinez, Michelle Stanchel, and Kia Williams. And then for our student council seat, Aaliyah Caldwell. So just congratulations to all of them. I see many of them on here, but congratulations on your election. And again, that starts uh, January 1st. Uh, just uh, a plea, right? to all of us and to encourage others to vote. Um, our voter turnout was 22.3%, uh, which sounds dismal, but honestly, it's pretty well what it is every year. Uh, but uh, just encouraging people to vote. Uh, Schneider this year sent out five notices uh, to our membership to try to encourage them to vote. And we even delayed, or delayed, well, we extended uh, the voting deadline three or four more days uh, at the end of October there, or, in, or beginning of October, excuse me, to uh, encourage people to vote. But we had 110 respond out of 493 members. And again, thank you for all, for everybody that ran. Uh, and speaking from someone that has ran and lost, uh, do not be discouraged, please, at all. Uh, we encourage you to consider a self-nominating or we'll probably seek you out as well to run again and just congratulations to all those elected and look forward to serving with you. That's all I got, Dave. Thanks, Clay. Um, and on that note, I just, again, I'd like to thank the, the efforts of the nominating committee and welcome all of the new uh, officers and counselors. And just before we move on, I'd, I'd really like to acknowledge our outgoing uh, council members, Terry Master, Gopi Sundar and Miyuki Mishiko uh, for their service and the contributions that they brought to the society. So again, just thank you very much. Okay, sorry, uh, switching screens is a pain in the butt. Okay, up next we have uh, the diversity committee, which uh, has become one of the most active and I think important committees uh, in the whole Water Birth Society. So I just like to welcome them and, and for their report and uh, thank them for, for all of their efforts uh, to make the, the Water Birth Society a, a better and more inclusive uh, and welcoming place. So I'm not okay. sure, Marisa, I guess yeah. you're up. Thanks, Dave. Um, yep, I'm Marisa. I'm a co-chair of the diversity committee with Juliet and Liz. And um, the, like the first half of this year, most of this year, we spent um, synthesizing all the feedback and recommendations that we received from this um, 2020 uh, panel discussion that we hosted at the meeting last year. It was a panel on um, Black, Indigenous, people of color experiences in water bird science. And so following the needs of that panel or the main needs that were identified to increase um, diversity and inclusion, um, we composed a, um, a, a request to council to fund a, a, fund a hire and a consultant specializing in diversity, equity, and inclusion in order to um, facilitate and develop um, these action plans that we had highlighted from the panel. And uh, the proposal came before council in April and it didn't pass. Um, the action plan that we had developed was formally um, approved, but since that um, vote did not pass to, um, to fund the hiring of a consultant, it was very close. We have been um, revising that proposal, which, will, which going to, we're going to revisit um, in 2022 and put forward in front of the new council the early next year as it's, we believe it's a key priority for our committee and for the Waterbird Society in order to um, improve uh, diversity across various axes. So we also worked with council to publicize and implement free student memberships for this year. And that was implemented um, 
And another that was another thing that was on a, another action item that was on our plan was to um, have free memberships to students and early career scientists with registration. So we're very happy that that just passed, as um, Kate had mentioned in the council meeting um, this week. Uh, in parallel with these efforts, we've also followed up with other activities. We've drafted guidelines for improving inclusiveness of council meetings and discussions, which we will also discuss with leadership following um, this meeting and then before the transition happens to the new council in January. We worked with the Student Affairs Committee to organize an early careers panel. So this panel brought together 20 um, professionals in water bird science across NGO, private consulting, federal, state, um, academia, and we had a panel of uh, water bird scientists from Latin America that was hosted in, um, in Spanish. And this uh, event um, had about 50 attendees. And so we, we were really happy with the turnout. And um, we also would like to collect um, all the, the resources and, and tips that were um, shared in the breakout sessions. Um, across those six panels and share them with uh, the student and early career attendees as well so that they have some, you know, some, some, something on paper to um, look back on because there were a lot of really great resources shared, especially in the Latin American um, panel. Um, you know, that's this one area that we don't know a lot about in terms of just being in the U.S. and as a student. Um, we all know that Latin America has, is one of the greatest biodiversity hotspots, but then the next question is how do we actually get those opportunities to work there? And so the panel has shared some really incredible work that they're doing and ways to get involved there. Um, we also um, organized, helped organize this committee fair before which is business meeting. But uh, our, we have some proposed activities for next year, which is to work with council to implement these onboarding procedures for new council members in order to improve access to dis discussion and decision making. We're going to revisit that consultant proposal, which I mentioned, and then um, continue developing um, events focused on international representation and LGBTQ issues um, throughout the year, but also in advance of the meeting next year in 2022. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to me, Liz or Juliet. Thanks. Thanks, Marisa. Is there any uh, questions for the diversity committee? And again, I just like to thank the, the entire committee for all the work they do and for remaining positive and proactive in what sometimes can be a, a bit of a frustrating process, but I just want to echo that this is a, a commitment uh, of the Waterbird Society and will remain a priority. And I think incorporating a lot of this stuff into our strategic, strategic plan will help uh, further a lot of these goals and get us to a better place. So thank you very much. Okay, Kate, I'm working off the old agenda. So I just wonder if you could pop pop up the current one for a second. Uh, yeah, so next we have um, Nelly, but I know that, well, Nelly, you spoke earlier and I know that we're gonna return to research awards um, here momentarily. So I'm not sure if we want to skip that. So we're right here in the agenda. Okay, and we skipped over the editor's Oops. report, eh? Yep, do you wanna go backwards? Uh, if we could go backwards for a second. Yep, sorry, I don't, I'm just having difficulty sharing screen, but so yeah, let's go back to the editor's report and then we'll um, continue on. Okay, um, I'm giving this on behalf of our editor, uh, Andy Kasner, who's been editor for the last three years and is gonna be stepping down uh, at the end of the year. Um, so just wanted to thank him for uh, the service that he, he's provided and, and you know, keeping our journal going. Um, 
as many of you know, we're, we've been, the journal's been struggling a bit. We've been behind. At the start of the year, we were about a year behind uh, in terms of uh, when the issues should be coming out. And um, Andy and especially uh, Stephanie Jones, our former editors, really stepped in and, and helped uh, uh, you know, the journal get back on track. So I'd, I'd really like to thank Stephanie. And as uh, Patty mentioned earlier, uh, she's being recognized for for that uh, you know monumental effort of of getting us back on track. So right now, where we stand, uh, we're about four months behind um, where we should be, and uh, doing everything we can to catch up. Uh, the next couple of issues, um, the first two issues of 2021, will be coming. One's uh, should be out like any day, and the other one is following close on on its heels. And by the end of the year, we should be back. Uh, back to where we should be. And I think some of the uh, work that the publications committee has done with the entire editorial uh, overhaul, um, you know, in, in uh, getting the online submissions software and uh, moving to having a managing editor and editor in chief and uh, big help by uh, associate editors is going to really um, increase confidence in our journal and uh, will result uh, in a higher quality uh, journal that has a, a lot bigger impact. So I just wanted to thank everyone involved and just reiterate that we're, we're getting back on track and we'll be on track for the start of the new uh, journal issue. And that reminds me, um, part of the editorial uh, overhaul is uh, we're going to be relying on associate editors to do um, some of the edit, edit uh, the review process, and those are those will be volunteer positions. So very soon there's going to be a call for uh, volunteers to act as associate editors, uh, so that we can get a, a list together. Um, you know, people putting down their expertise, their their areas. Uh, either functionally or taxa specific areas that they feel comfortable um, leading a, a review process for some of the papers. And we're gonna be putting a call out for uh, potential associate editors so that the incoming editor in chief has, has a list that they can, they can draw on at least. Uh, that's it. Uh, does anyone have any questions about the journal? I have a question. Um, yeah. if, so if someone submitted uh, a manuscript months ago now, um, will there be any like contact, like update as far as like how much longer they'll have to wait? I, just, I, I know I have someone that I work with who submitted one seven months ago and said they haven't heard anything and they're just wondering what the status is. That's a, thank you for bringing that up. Yes, I'm putting my email in the chat right now and then anyone Within the next couple of weeks, we should be updating all at all uh, authors that have submissions into Waterbirds. And then if anyone has a, any specific questions or concerns, they can address them to me. Thanks. Thanks so Dave, rem reminder. I, I think that um, there's existing associate editors that haven't been heavily utilized in, in recent years, but exist. And I'm wondering, um, Will will the slate be wiped clean and you'll start all over again? Will the existing associate editors remain and then more will be added? What's the plan for that? Yeah, another good point, Jennifer. Thanks. Uh, no, uh, it's a mix of people being underutilized in that capacity and then other people that have moved on and that don't want to be involved anymore. So I think the the current list of associate editors is a good starting point. But really, the main function of the editor in chief is going to be uh, it's more process driven. So they'll, they'll have final say on the direction and scope of the journal and final say on uh, scientific quality of papers. But a lot of the review is actually going to be done through the uh, AEs. Uh, Patty? Yeah, I was just going to add that, that I think what the intention is is to ask the current associate editors 
to reaffirm given a new or expanded job description that they would like to continue. So not a wipe the slate clean, but if the nature of the work may be changing, we want people to buy in or you know, decline. Okay, thank you for that clarification. It looks like Jeff has his hand up too. Dave, have you announced who the new editor is going to be? And if not, when will we know? And when will they start their work? Um, Erica, if you're still on, on the call, could you maybe field that one? Um, Yes, I can feel that. Uh, we are in the pr process of interviewing uh, potential candidates for the edit editor in chief position. And I suspect we will know by the end of the first week of December. Thanks, Erica. Yeah, thanks. Okay, if there's no further questions, Kate. Who's up, up next? Yep, up next is Research Grants, Nelly. Let me unmute myself. So we had, uh, we received um, uh, 46, 45 proposals uh, this past year, uh, nine for the Kushlin Award, 10 for the Nisbet, and 26 for the Waterbird Society. And uh, we awarded about $30,000 uh, in all of them together. Uh, we had three recipients of the Kushlin Grant. Um, and uh, oh, should I, are we announcing the names later? I'm sorry, I think I missed part of the meeting or should, can I announce them now? I do have slides for the award ceremony, but okay. you're, you're okay. welcome to do it now too. Okay, uh, so Ricardo Jorge Lopez, but Giri Samiran and Dorji Kuzung uh, got the Kuslan grants. Uh, the Nisbet grants went to Gemma Kluckas and Kate Sheehan. And then the Waterbird grants went to Gambold, Olna Raikia, I'm killing the name, and Kyle Lloyd. Uh, so just to just smattering of different countries and different places. So it's Portugal, India, Bhutan, uh, United States, United States, um, Mongolia, and South Africa. Uh, so it's really exciting. We got. Uh, um, it was, it's, it's been, a, the selection is getting more and more difficult because we get a lot of great grants. Uh, and uh, it's, um, you know, I hope we keep, continue to get uh, good grants, uh, good grants from people. And uh, the next uh, grant period, uh, grants are due by February, February 1st. So get them in there. Cool, thanks. Uh, does anyone have questions for Nelly and the uh, grants committee? Doesn't look like it, but again, I'd just like to say thank you to the entire committee for for you know what they what they do. Like this is really important, I think, for furthering the society's uh, research and conservation goals. It really uh, helps further our international uh, aspirations, you know, of being a truly international society, and and is really a piece that uh, you know elevates uh, the society's uh, visibility. So thank you very much, Dave. I'm sorry, I need to add this. Uh, I it just reminded me when you said that. Uh, I really should acknowledge uh, all the reviewers that uh, spent hours uh, looking through proposals. Uh, I mean, I'm only one person, but there's a whole bunch of people that spent a lot of time doing this. Uh, so my list, the, all the people that reviewed proposals this year are John Bergerod, Susan Albin, Dave Moore, Kate Sheehan, Gopi Sundar, and Juliet Lamb. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Nelly.
Okay, up next is a, a report for the Conservation Committee, and I think Jonathan's going to be giving this one. Are you there, Jonathan? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, my something was my microphone always needs to be reset. So, um, so this uh, this year um, we uh, worked on the, um, the 2021 Outstanding Contribution Conservation Award, and so um, well, first uh, we had sort of a an ad hoc subcommittee that that works on it. Um, and uh, Brad Andres uh, sort of did the first pass through uh, looking at articles from the uh, from volume 42, which is the 2019 publication year, and identified nine uh, articles from that year that um, met one of our three criteria for um, being conservation focused. And then um, and then Kate Sheehan and uh, Nellie Sapora and myself went through those um, in detail and narrowed it down to three, which we brought to our the entire conservation committee for a discussion and then a vote. And then <clears throat> the winner paper was Carl et al. Uh, 2019, which is Cassin's Ocklet, um, Tychoramphus Ludicus Population Size Reproduction and Habitat Management on a Recently Colonized Island in California, USA. And uh, the lead author, Ryan Carl, will be our um, a speaker tonight uh, talking about this work at our award ceremony. Um, so that was the major business we worked on. We didn't have um, any real activity on advocacy this year, but um, already had a couple people bring issues to me in the last month or so that will probably form the basis of some letter writing, um, hopefully in uh, the coming months. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, any questions for the Conservation Committee? Um, if not, again, I just wanted to say that this is a really important committee for furthering our conservation goals and for advocacy. And I'd just like to thank you all for your, for your service and the, the time that you put into this. OK, up next is uh, Pat's going to give a report on the membership committee. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, I, I gave a, a really um, long one in the meeting right before this. So I'm just going to summarize that uh, we have decided to really uh, focus right now on on changing the, the, the membership uh, makeup and targeting all of these uh, early career people and a lot of students and things like that. We're going to be working very, very uh, closely with student activities, diversity, and outreach to, um, to bring that off. So I think that our uh, membership is probably going to stabilize. It might not really increase, but uh, John Anderson and I are, are now uh, chairing the committee. And I'm going to just um, send this, uh, who was all, all on our committees. Uh, it was great. Um, that, that was the auction committee, which I kind of do both. So. Uh, I just want to say that look next year for a complete change in uh, membership, and we're going to really be promoting uh, diversity, and we're going to outreach to all sorts of people over social media, and we also um, are going to uh, really involve uh, students and, and early career researchers and in workshops and things like that. So I'm I'm pretty excited and. Uh, John and I are plotting to do a bunch of stuff, and we have a, our first meeting of the whole committee at the end of next week, so it's going to be good. And putting my other hat on, um, just want to give you a kind of a heads up about the auction. Um, we've we've done. I mean, I thought we'd do better, but you know, I I guess I just I don't I don't realize that we're all cheap. <laughs> so, um, but we we grossed uh, three thousand fifty five dollars so far. So keep bidding, and. Um, We've uh, 88 uh, percent, a little bit over that of all the items were bid. So I thought that was good. We had 259 bidders, but we only had 19 donors. And I must say that uh, Chip and uh, Susan and I were the main donors of that. So you guys need to make next year. We're going to have a, a hybrid auction, I think. So 
let's just uh, make that even better next year. Uh, so the platform that we had takes 5%, which I think is, is a pretty, pretty good, it's quite low. And then uh, the paintings uh, that were sold uh, by uh, Barry McKay, he offered to split them 50-50. So if you subtract all that out, uh, we made uh, 24, uh, 20, but then if you then include the raffle, that comes up to almost $2,800. So, um, so I think that's pretty good. So buy more raffle tickets. We've only sold 99, so they're only $5. So please buy those and, uh, and just keep changing the, the bids, just uh, have a little competition. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I ask a question, Pat? Sure. Um, I, I'll admit, well, it's funny that you and Chip, because you're both in Canada, but I, I will admit that I was reluctant to engage in the um, silent auction part because I'm in Canada and there's like customs and mailings to any rate. It just, I, I ended up buying lots of raffle tickets to make up for it, but I'm not sure if anybody else had that uh, reluctance as well. Yeah, I think that I, I, I put that out at the very beginning that, um, you know, with the whole customs thing, I think if you just send them, I mean, if, if you're a donor, you can just send them as gifts and put a very low value. And so I think that's um, how I've done it in the past. And so if you're um, buying, uh, then hopefully the people will have said that. So I don't think you'll have to pay customs. So we'll, uh, we should probably uh, get feedback on that. So maybe I'll, I'll have Schneider send around a little a question and anyone who's having issues having to pay customs um, should get in touch with me. But so far, I think there are no customs that you have to worry about or you know, any kind of taxes. So uh, this is Chris. So it might be good to put on the web page somewhere if if you have you know if you're if somebody in Canada wins the item, then if there's any ins and outs that you need to do to get get it shipped. Uh, to go, you know, directly with, with minimal of fuss. Yeah, I mean, essentially it needs to be less than, you know, 60 or $80. I can't remember what it is. Like, otherwise you will be paying taxes, even if you put it as a gift. Um, any rate, it just, it, it just seems, it, it is complicated and certainly that, and I really appreciate you undertaking it. So thank you. Well, I guess it just remains to be seen. So, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I, I just want to echo that, Pat. Thank you uh, to you and Susan and Chip so much. Like doing this in a digital format is really challenging. And I think we've done a really good job raising money this year. And just want to encourage everyone to keep, uh, it's a good cause. It goes to student travel. So keep, keep bidding, keep making Patty bump up her bids. Please stop that, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so I think that was the final report, if I'm right, Kate? Correct, yep, just announcements. And miraculously, we're ahead of schedule, so I just would like to thank, I mean, we're a volunteer organization and the time people commit is sort of the lifeblood of making this uh, a really vital and relevant society. So I just wanna thank you all, you know, from the officers, counselors, committee chairs, and everyone that was involved in, in meetings and, and other aspects of the society. Like, I, I can't thank you enough and just keep up the good work, stay positive. And yeah, so I'm, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a really challenging couple of years with, uh, you know, we're in a period of existential crisis and change. Like this comes reevaluating the societies we live on, uh, our place as a species and sort of the, the mess that we've gotten the planet into in terms of biodiversity and climate change. And to throw a global pandemic into that mix makes things really challenging. And uh, I just think I'm, We've accomplished a lot in spite of those challenges. Like I'm really proud of a lot of the things that we've we've done over the past couple of years, and uh, I'm really optimistic about the future. Uh, 
you know, the people that are come up and coming in the leadership of the society uh, leaves me feeling really optimistic and, and positive about the future. So just stay passionate about things and, uh, you know, keep up the good work, guys and gals, sorry. Um, and then I just like to emphasize um, the strategic plan. So we've kicked it off. It's going to be uh, going full tilt during the next year. And it's really imperative that we have uh, a, a variety of perspectives and, and experiences that are going into that. This is guiding our strategic direction for the next 10 years and beyond. So I just encourage everyone to get, get involved in whatever capacity you can and make your voices heard. It's your society, especially for the younger members. Uh, it's the society of the future that you will have a huge uh, role in. So that's pretty much all I have to say. I see Erica has her hand up. Yes, I just wanted to echo what people have been putting in the chat that I've really appreciated your leadership, Dave. And I don't know if other people know that you're stepping down on the, uh, December 31st and that Patty Schitz is taking over. And I just think you've done a great job moving the society forward through what was definitely a challenging time to virtual meetings, but I agree. And so thanks very much for your leadership. And I'm really pleased to, to see what Patty is going to do. Great. Did we lose Dave? Sorry, I was on <laughs> mute. Um, yeah, our, our last order of business is to adjourn. So if uh, someone could, could move. Uh, and second that motion. I so move. I'll second. Thank you very much. If everyone could just yell yay, if they All agree. Right. Yay. 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 Nay, if they don't. No, I don't want to adjourn. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Descent is good. And then uh, we have a short break and then onward and upward towards the uh, highlight of of the day and that's the uh, recognition uh, ceremony. So I'll see everybody back at, is it 6.15? 6.15, yep. And on the same channel, right? I think it's a different no. channel. Different we're channel, gonna, okay. we're different gonna, channel. Yep. Okay, thanks everyone. Uh, great business meeting. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye. Okay, folks, I'm going to end the meeting for all. Okay, excellent. Bye.